Do you have a love-hate relationship with diagramming tools? I do. We know the power of a good diagram. After all, we are all visual learners. That's why we love diagrams as a tool to design our systems, but also as a tool to collaborate on them. And that's the reason why I want to share with you Mermaid. During all my career, I have used tons of diagramming tools. From Visio to Miro, without ignoring Trout.io, and many more. Even with a clear evolution on those tools, where the experience keeps improving, there are some things lacking for a software developer. There are many difficulties for a developer working with those tools. There's a lot of labor involved in keeping diagrams accurate, it's difficult to track changes, it's hard to collaborate, and also it's not uncommon to lose the source file. What if the diagramming experience was more aligned with what developers are used to do? We have done that to build systems. We have done that to documentation. We completely ditched the use of a mouse to do those. Why not doing the same for diagrams? Why not treating diagrams as code? Once you have a textual representation of a diagram, now you can commit it in your Git repository. You can see diffs. It's easier to collaborate. Versioning is trivial, but above all, diagramming is now part of the source code. It's part of everything that we do. It's part of our developer experience. And that's where mermaid.js is useful. Mermaid is a tool that generates diagrams from text. There are many use cases for that, but there are two that I find particularly interesting. One of them is when your software needs to generate a diagram. Imagine a flowchart with the decision tree of your domain model, or for example, a visual representation of your build system. With Mermaid, those things are quite simple. But there's another use case that I find even more interesting for us as a developer. With Mermaid, we can write our diagrams and keep them close to the source code inside of that repo. Once we do that, it's easier to track changes, it's easy to collaborate, it's easy to do versioning, and that is all we want. And you may be asking why not using tools like draw.io that you can export the source file, or for example, plant UML. And one of the big reasons for me, it's not only the simplicity of the language on Mermaid, but also the fact that Mermaid is being adopted by many of the tools that we use nowadays. As an example, GitHub can render Mermaid diagrams, not only on your Markdown files, but also on comments, for example. And even besides software developer tools, you can see Mermaid being adopted by other tools that many of us use for productivity. A good example is Notion, a tool that many developers use for note-taking, Nowadays, you can render Mermaid diagrams inside Notion. To me, those integrations are the path to Mermaid become the ubiquitous way of doing that. Enough talking, let's take a look into Mermaid in action. Let's start by taking a look into what type of diagrams you can do with Mermaid. The list has been growing, but as you can see, you can do many things like flowcharts, sequence diagrams, class diagrams, state diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, and many more, can charts, pie charts, all those kind of things. There are even some experimental features that are quite interesting, like this C4 diagram model that you may know if you have been following Simon's Brown work. Let's build our first diagram. Mermaid diagrams live inside Markdown. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a Markdown file. Since it's Markdown, you can add your titles, your text, your tables, everything that you want. So let's create a subtitle flowchart is the first example that we will take a look. And when you want to express your diagram, what you'll be doing is opening a code block. And now in the same way that we usually tag this code block with the language that is inside of that code block, HTML, C Sharp, whatever, we say here Mermaid. Now we can start implementing our diagram. For example, on that case is a flowchart. So I will type flowchart. I can then express if I want that flowchart to be top down or left to right, for example. Let's go with left to right. And then what I do is to define each box of that flowchart and create relationships between them. But before we keep going, let me tell you one extra thing. As usually in VS Code, everything that you want to do, you need to install an extension. So the first thing that you should be doing is going into your extensions and search for Mermaid. I installed this one, Markdown Preview Mermaid Support, and I'm quite happy with it. I will link it in the description. Once the extension is installed, if we open the preview, Markdown Open Preview to the side, you will see that once I start building this diagram, I can see it on my right pane. 
let's say that my flow chart is as simple as this one from A to B. Okay, you can see I have here a clear representation of that flow chart. But let's build something more realistic. Okay, on this case, I'm documenting for my team the webhook ingestion of some events. So my first step is the trigger itself that will be handled by a listener. But let's say that I don't want the word trigger to be exposed in the documentation. On that case, I can do something as this. I can define a label for that state. And I'm used to see the entry point of those flow charts to be a circle. Can I do it? Yes, I can. As simple as this. Let me quickly build some more steps. So you can see that it's more of the same, some small differences. So you can notice what type of things this can do is that, for example, I have here a label as well as I have done here on the top, but the braces that I'm using will change the shape of that state. That's the reason why you can see here a circle, some with a 90 degree angle and another one with a rounded shape. Okay, so you can express different things inside of your diagram in different ways. You can even do something like this, where I'm expressing a database, and then we see it right here expressed as the typical notation of a database. And let's face it, it's quite expressive, this declaration. Let me showcase another type of diagram. This one is a sequence diagram that is expressing the way that the outbox pattern works. And if you are familiar with the outbox pattern, likely you already noticed that there's something missing here. So I'm beginning a transaction and I'm not committing it. So let's do that. So I'll say that I have an interaction between my service and the database and I will give it a name and it's done. And the cool thing is that now when I want to commit this change, I can clearly see the div and it's obvious to me the change on this process. I will commit it and let's take a look on GitHub how this looks like. On GitHub, when you go to create your pull request, you will see here only that change. Now you can imagine the experience of reviewing this change. Imagine that you are handling a bug that some state is missing or some validation is missing on a given flow and you need to keep the documentation updated as part of your change. So it will be quite clear if you express that in this way. And if you are the person that is reviewing this change, you can always go to the file and click here and see view file and GitHub will render that diagram for you. Not only that, but if the person that is reviewing this change wants to leave a comment with a diagram, they can do it with Mermaid as well. Imagine that I want to propose some changes to the names of those stages. I will create here my diagram. Once again, I use that notation of the code block. And if I go to the preview, you can see here the representation of what I've just built. Now you can see the traceability of those changes on documents, on technical documents that support your design, on your documentation, if you are building it through Markdown, for example. And it's an amazing collaboration tool. Let me show you one more type of diagram that we usually do. Do you know those diagrams with layer dependencies that we usually do, either if you are doing multi-layer, clean architecture, hexagonal architecture, or whatever? It's quite common to use those diagrams to explain what our system does. Unfortunately, at the moment, there's no component diagram on Mermaid. There's an issue opened where many of us have been asking for that feature, but there's a way to express the same thing nowadays. So we open our code block once again with Mermaid. Then I will define that I want to create a new graph from top to down. And I will say that I have an API that depends on my core application. Then I have also an infrastructure that depends on the core. This is the typical thing if you are doing, for example, clean architecture, for example. And then I want to express that my API depends on the infrastructure, for example. And voila, I have my diagram. Some more things that you can do. Imagine that you are doing hexagonal architecture and you want to express that core as an hexagon. You can do that. Double curly braces. And inside that, let's add the label, for example, core application. And now I have a good representation of that layered architecture, even not having that component diagram, more formal one from UML. And let's say that I want to build another version of this diagram where I split my core application into where I will see, for example, application services and the domain. Before we go to that, let's add a title to this one. We can use that notation to define a title on this diagram. And now let's build another. So the idea is the same. Let's create a new code block. Let's give it a title, define our graph. 
Let's say that the API will depend on something that we'll name core, but this time let's use that core as a grouping thing. So we can create a subgraph. What does that mean? It means that we will have a box, the core, with a graph inside of it. Inside of that box, I want to specify my services depending on the domain. And now let's bring the infrastructure project that depends on the core, and finally, our API that depends on the infrastructure. So you can see that we can go really far with this approach. We can even give colors, do a lot of things with labels, changing the shapes. You can even build pie charts, for example. There's a lot of things that you can do with Mermaid. And let me tell you that there's still one use case where I don't use Mermaid. That is when I'm either doing a demo or for example, I'm collaborating with someone and I want to express through a diagram quickly. On those cases, I find that having a rough design on something like draw.io or Excalidraw or Miro, anything like that will be far more productive. However, if it's something that will be part of the life cycle of that project, that will be changing during the time, that I will need to collaborate with other people asynchronously, I find that Mermaid is amazing. Now it's the time for you to go to play with it and let me know what do you think. And by the way, if you like this type of video where I show you some of those tools that can make you more productive, please let me know in the comments. And if you want another tool recommendation, I would advise you to take a look into this video right here. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.